Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Pay attention to salvation message at the beginning of the video. One sin, one bad thought can send you to eternal hellfire, not meant for us, but rather hell was created for Satan and the fallen angels. So taking a look at, at the Bible, we're going to talk out loud. Again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is your gospel. Jesus Christ, where he died, he buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day like the only guy can do. Trust with that with your heart, and remember you're counting on that for your salvation, the shed blood on the cross to forgive your past, present, and future sins. It's a heart belief. It's it's not a head belief, and it's also one of those things you got to remember you can't earn yourself into heaven. A lot of people believe they're going to be righteous, that they're a good person. That's not the case. Take a look at Joel 3, 2. I will gather, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So we, you know, we see here the parting of the land. We see here that God will gather the nations. And so when we see countries forming together and alliances against Israel, against the West and the United States, not that the United States is good, but it has a partnership with Israel and always has. And we see that these nations are moving because God is, gonna, is going to have them move against Israel. God's going to have them move against his people, Israel. He's going to gather them in the battle of Armageddon at the end of the tribulation, at the end of the seven years. And we're seeing at the time before the rapture where this gathering is happen, happening. That's why I'm, I'm pretty positive there's not going to be a World War III with nuclear weapons going off because part of the gathering of the nations is not destroying them now. It's actually preserving them. It's gathering them together. It's making them feel like they're stronger so they will come against the Lord led by the Antichrist, and this battle must take place. So what, you know, what has to occur? You know, there's some, there's some things that could, that could occur that certainly could come to play. We know that Israel is always a focus point. We know that Russia, Gog Magog, and, and, and we know other nations in the Middle East, Iran, uh, Egypt, Turkey, other countries will play, play a role in the end times battle. But let's look at um, Isaiah, and we'll take a look at chapter 17, and we'll see what the Bible reads here. I was talking about Damascus, Syria in particular. The, verse 1, the, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. So that's a prophecy that hasn't happened yet. Damascus is 
been around about 5,000 years. It's an old, old city, and it hasn't been a ruinous heap. It hasn't been destroyed. The Lord will destroy Damascus. It'll be a ruinous heap. And that's Isaiah 17.1. Will that happen before the tribulation, or is that a tribulation happening? Not really sure, but it will definitely come to pass. So Syria and, and, and that area, Damascus, Iran, and the proxies is something to keep your eye on. You know, we see Russia and Ukraine, and even Israel has stopped flying their planes outside of Israeli airspace because they are threatened by Russia. These planes are being threatened by, by Russia. There's no longer security that Russia won't shoot them down. So we see tensions mounting between Russia and Israel and and. Iran, of course, has always wanted to destroy Israel, so nothing has changed there. And we know that that the nations will be gathered by a leader, and the world is looking for a leader. The world is looking for someone who will, will take over, someone who will come in with a plan, a peace plan. And we're not looking for that. We're looking for our blessed hope. Daniel eleven twenty four reads, He, whoever this Antichrist is, shall enter peacefully even unto the fattest pro places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yes. And he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. So he shall enter peacefully. This Antichrist, you know, will have probably words like never spoken before. We, You know, we see politicians today and, you know, we... You know, we know that they're good and uh, they, they have um, the ability of tongue to speak. But this one that's going to come is going to be like none other. And if you look at this, this, this chapter as a whole, verse 20, Then shall stand up in his estate a razor of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within a few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. Verse 21, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peacefully and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. That's verse 21. So they, they did not give Jesus Christ the, the, you know, did not bring in the kingdom. They did not accept him, but they will accept this person that's to come. Verse 22, and with the arms of a flood shall they be overthrown from before him and, he, and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the covenant. So we see a covenant here. And there's going to be a covenant with many, as we know. And that is that is yet to come. This is this is future prophecy that we're reading here in, in Daniel chapter eleven. But we know he's going to come in with flatteries. We know he's going to be he's going to stand up in a state. He's going to be honored by the world. The new world governments are going to accept him. The UN is going to accept him. The world is going to um, to want to have him rule over the wealth of the world, the kingdoms of the world, and the ten kings. And the ten kingdoms will stand up in the times of the end. If you look up the word last times in the Bible, 2 Timothy 3, 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Well, the last day was even Jesus' time. Because remember, uh, to, to God, a day is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. You know, these are things to come. First John two eighteen, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. We see this evilness in the world. We see the prince of the power of the air and the darkness and the principalities and the things that have made this world really a bad place to, to be in. Second Peter 3.3, 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. We have people, people doubting the rapture. That Jesus Christ is going to come back. And that's a prevalent thing as, as we see the apostate churches, as we see people turn away from God in these last times. So that was last times. If you search up last days, you get another set of verses, but they're all very similar. And we know that in these last times, things are going to happen. Things are going to change. You think the world's bad now. You just wait. You haven't seen anything yet. As we look forward to our blessed hope, the rapture, you know, keep your eye on Jesus Christ. Keep your eye on the prize. Anyway, get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you need prayer requests, leave them. God bless. Have a great day.